Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio from Science Buddies, and in this video, I'll show you how to make a battery from coins, also called a voltaic pile. Here's what you'll need to do this experiment. First, you'll need pennies and nickels. The cleaner, the better. If they're covered in dirt and grime, you can wash them with a sponge and soapy water before you start. If you want to take measurements for a science project, you will need a multimeter. We're not going to go over all the details of using a multimeter in this video, but if you've never used one before, check out our excellent multimeter tutorial linked in the description of this video. You will also need a red LED, a small strip of aluminum foil, small circles cut from either construction paper or paper towels that are slightly smaller than the pennies, a bowl with one quarter cup of vinegar mixed with one tablespoon of salt, and finally, tweezers can make it easier to handle all the small parts. To get started building your battery, take one penny and one nickel. These will form the metal electrodes of your battery. Also take one paper circle. You're going to dip this in the salt and vinegar solution, which will form your battery's electrolyte. It's the electrochemical reaction that occurs when you combine these materials that generates electricity. So take your penny, place it on top of the aluminum foil strip. This strip is just going to make it easier to connect the multimeter probes later. Next, take your paper circle and dip it in the salt and vinegar solution. Shake it off slightly to make sure that it doesn't have any big drops of liquid hanging off, but you want to make sure it's pretty soaked. Take the paper circle and place it centered on the penny. Make sure it's not drooping over the edges. Then take your nickel, place it on top of the paper circle. You have now completed one cell of your battery. Now, set your multimeter to measure DC voltage. Again, if you don't know what that means, check out the link to our multimeter tutorial in the description of this video. Take your multimeter probes, touch the black probe to the strip of aluminum foil, and the red probe to the top of the nickel. You should be able to measure the voltage produced by the battery. Now, this is where you have to be careful because this project can be a little finicky depending on how much pressure you apply with the multimeter probes, and how much liquid electrolyte there is in between your two electrodes. So if you do not press hard enough with the multimeter probes, then you won't have good contact between the different layers of the battery, and you might get a very low or fluctuating reading. However, if you press too hard and there's too much liquid in between the coins, then you can squeeze the liquid out over the edges of the battery, causing a short circuit, which can again cause a low or fluctuating reading. So you will need to play with the amount of pressure you apply with the multimeter probes to make sure you get a stable and consistent reading. If you're still having trouble, you might need to start over. You can take your battery apart, and if it seems like your electrolyte is too dry, you can dip it in the salt and vinegar solution again. Or if it is too wet and it's always squeezing out over the edges, you can take everything apart, dry it off, and try to start over without the electrolyte having too much liquid this time. Once you get your first cell working, you can build a second one by piling another one on top of it. This is where it gets the name Voltaic Pile. So take a penny, place it on top of the first nickel. This does not get a paper layer in between the nickel and the penny. Then take your next paper layer, again, soak it in the salt and vinegar solution, put that on top of the penny, and put another nickel on top of that paper layer. Again, take your multimeter leads, apply gentle but firm pressure, and you should see that the voltage is higher than what you had with a single cell. But again, be careful, because if there's too much liquid and you press too hard, you might squeeze some liquid out over the edges, shorting out one or more of the cells, and lowering the voltage. If you don't press hard enough, you won't have good contact between the layers, and again, you might see a low or fluctuating voltage. As you add more cells, you can also test if your battery has enough current to light up an LED. Note that LEDs have two sides, a positive side and a negative side. The positive side is the longer leg, the negative side is the shorter leg. So you will need to connect the longer or positive leg to the nickel or top of your battery, and the shorter or negative leg to the aluminum foil or bottom of your battery. To do that, it is a lot easier if you bend the legs of the LED. So you can see here, I have bent the positive leg up and then hooked the end of it down, which makes it easier to connect to the nickel. Now, in order to light up, an LED needs enough voltage, but in order to be full brightness, it also needs enough current. As you can see in this clip here, the LED is fairly dim because this battery does not produce very much current or the amount of electricity is flowing. So don't be surprised if you see that in your project. It does not mean anything's broken. 
It just means that these tiny coin cell batteries don't produce enough current to light the LED up to full brightness. You can measure the current produced by your battery by switching the multimeter dial over to the DC current setting, and again touching the black multimeter probe to the aluminum foil and the red multimeter probe to the nickel. However, note that doing so effectively short circuits the battery, so the current reading will drop very quickly as a chemical reaction occurs and the battery begins to drain. You should now know how to build your own voltaic pile. Just remember to be careful with the amount of pressure you apply with the multimeter probes, and watch out for electrolyte dripping over the edges of the battery. For a science project, you can investigate how the voltage and current produced by the battery change with the number of cells. For written instructions for this and over a thousand other hands-on science and engineering projects, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.